Hello students, this video is going to be what I hope is a relatively quick just little review of the ideal gas law and the combined gas laws, as well as the individual ones, Boyle's Law, Charles Law, those things. I know that I personally am a big fan of the idea though that once you understand the ideal gas law, you should really just always think of it as your first concept and then do whatever you need to do after that. So let's take a look at that ideal gas law for a moment and I'm going to rearrange the equation to where it's going to say R is going to be equal to PV over NT. Because this is the big powerful thing of the ideal gas law. It says that if you take a gas and you look at its pressure and its volume, the number of moles of that gas, and the temperature that it's at on an absolute temperature scale, this ratio is always a constant, which we obviously call the ideal gas constant. That becomes a really interesting restriction. And I also like to remind people of this. Let's take, some of you have probably seen this example before that I give. Let me take this distance and let me give it a name. Let me say that it's one foot. Probably isn't that on your screen, but you could certainly understand what I mean. This is a fixed quantity, and if I want to describe that distance to you, I could use this number, one, and the units are ever so important. I could say feet. I could use a different set of units with a different number as well. I could say that this is 12 inches. Notice I have a different number, but I have different units, but it still describes this same quantity. I could say that it's 30.48 centimeters. That quantity unchanged, but it has a very different number, has a very different unit. Don't forget that the ideal gas constant is exactly the same thing. It's just sometimes harder to see that. It has a number and it has a very particular set of units that mimic these variables in that equation. It is truly a constant. It does not change, but just like the distance between these two points here and here, I could describe it to you with a wide variety of different number unit combinations. That's why you see so many of those. Okay, moving on from that though. If this is a true fact, if no matter what, I take a pressure of a gas and I multiply it by the volume, and then I divide it by the number of moles and divide it by the temperature, if that's always equal to the same thing, then this must also be true that P1, V1, over N1, T1, so some set of conditions for a gas, that's what the one is supposed to be there, is equal to P2, V2, over N2, T2. Basically, I'm just using the ideal gas law twice that's set up in this situation, and I'm setting those two different scenarios equal to each other. And hopefully what you can start to see here is you start to see the different gas laws. For example, if I get rid of everything that is in a denominator, there's Boyle's Law for you, which simply says that the product of pressure and volume must always be equal to any other combination of that pressure and volume, as long as N and T, the number of moles in the absolute temperature, stay constant. If I get rid of the pressure in the moles terms, just say that those things are constant so that they cancel on the equation on both sides. Then you'll see the remaining part that I have here is Charles' law, which just says that V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And lastly, if I let the N's cancel and I let the V's cancel, you should recognize the last of our named laws that just deal with the two terms, where we have P over T equals P over T. That one is the Gay-Lussac's law. If you get rid of just the number of moles, that's a really common real life example that you would have where you just don't have any flow of gas, nothing coming in, nothing leaving. The number of moles is constant, so they cancel on both sides. Then you'll see what people refer to as the combined gas laws. So again, I have a strong preference. Instead of trying to keep track of these three different named laws and even this combined gas law, always just start from the ideal gas law, but you can certainly think of it in this form. And then you should be able to generate this sort of thing yourself.
If you're working a problem and it says assuming the number of moles and the temperature are held constant, just mentally go through and block these things out because they would mathematically be canceling on either side of the equation. So to be a little bit more quantitative about that, what if I had a problem where I said I had a balloon that initially was at 1.3 ATM of pressure and contained a volume of 2.5 liters and I could say what would the final volume be if I allowed that pressure to go down to say 0.8 ATM then I'd be solving for V2. The only thing that you still just have to keep track of is you just have to make sure that you are in the same units on both sides of the equation. You should have some units cancel, but then the two like terms, so this was V1 over here, whatever I'm measuring V1 in, that's going to be what V2 is going to pop out as because, again, just of the mathematics with the units. So if I just briefly finish off this little problem, though, and I say that V2, this would be 4.0. 625 if I hold on to all of my digits and that would be in liters again because my original volume was in liters and from there I could cut it down according to how many sig figs I had. I wasn't being very careful about my sig figs in this particular example. So again the big take home picture is just use the full ideal gas law in order to generate this idea and then whittle it down as needed. Understand the combined gas laws, or this sort of picture, is always a comparison of one state to another state, where effectively you are ratioing out the R. If you have one particular state, where of these four variables you know three of them, you must go back to the full ideal gas law in order to calculate what that fourth variable would be. That is the only way that we can truly pin down a particular number. So if I'm a little bit more specific, let's say a problem where we knew temperature, we knew number of moles, and we knew pressure. Remember, we always know R. In that situation, I could calculate the actual volume associated with it. And that would be called an ideal gas law problem. And I do have sample videos of that. So hopefully this little discussion made sense to you. There's really not a whole lot more to it than that. Uh, if it made sense, you should certainly let your computer know.